Welcome back, season yeah. two, Co Conspiracies and Cold Beverages. Well, I don't look the same as those pictures in the introduction, goodness. I'm not oh, wearing well. a tie. I know, sorry about that. Uh, I have to fix my shirt. couldn't Photoshop your... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was good. Bald or, or crime like pays. That. that was the homework assignment back in the yeah. 83. Crime pays. All righty. Yes, how was your break? I was good, man. Uh, you know, dealt with some stuff. and uh, Yeah. It's a new year, though, new season. Uh, excited about season two of Conspiracies and Cold Beverages yes. with Mr. Joint. We got our new T-shirts in. Wow. Uh, Boy. I don't know if it's uh, reversed on people's screen, but it says it Mr. Is Joint right. Survivors. And then uh, it has the uh, spread Mr. Joint on YouTube. It's all backwards. I don't know why. My well, you always said I was a backwards child. so Yeah, so Having it's not backwards on the shirt. Well, okay. She's backwards on the screen, but yeah, okay. I thought it looked good. It looks like the end, old NWA. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know the album. So. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Or NWO too on wrestling. Remember? Oh yeah, New the World Order. Order. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're back. How was you're your uh, New Year? How so? You know, give me a little update. How was your Christmas? How was your? New yeah, Year? it was good. Everything was good, and uh, stayed home most for the most part, and. Uh, Almost tore my Achilles tendon putting torches in the lake. And uh, why were you putting torches in a lake? Well, it was, we were having a little get together for some music. From, oh, tiki torches. Yeah, yeah, tiki torches. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. I thought you were having like a Viking funeral. The same. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, kind that's you always funny. wanted. Yeah, the Viking funeral will be later. I don't have the boat anymore though, so I'm gonna have to get a boat. I like to get one of those sushi boats, you know, and just lay myself on there. And just fire the arrow. Somebody needs to fire the arrow. Yeah. The arrow. Do they? Yeah, let's get know. started. Conspiracies, yes. Yeah. So, so this is a conspiracy show. So That's season right. two, it's a conspiracy show. Yep. Uh, you know, we changed the format a little bit. I don't know if people notice. There's no, you know, me blabbering away about all this stuff. We just kind of do a yeah. quick little introduction, and uh, you know, how do you like your new NFTs? We're gonna put those on the uh, internet. Okay. Mr. In your Don Johnson outfit in oh, yeah, Point yeah. In Florida, and Florida blows up. And then the other <laughs> one where wis wisdom is shooting out of your eyes and oh, it's man. bringing the whole universe oh, together. You lose a lot of, you probably lost half your, half your subscribers just now with that, but go ahead. Well, that's okay. So what's they don't, they don't pay for anything anyways. What have you, uh, what have you, what have you learned about conspiracies in the, our time off? Well, what I learned is going through all of our shows. Uh, yeah. I went through every episode. I watch, you know, I watch them, I edit them. Um, and uh, what I learned is that this isn't a history show. This is a conspiracy show, but it's right. also not a conspiracy theory show. No, we're not given theories. We're showing actual historical events that hey, there was a you know there was multiple yeah. people involved. That is considered a conspiracy. And we gave, you know, the definitions of conspiracies. We gave a lot of information to the public that I think a lot of them appreciate. Uh, one episode, though, did get removed by YouTube, and I am very proud of it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Episode 11. So we had 12 episodes of last season, last year. Well, now we only have 11 because re YouTube removed one. And uh, like I said, I'm very proud of it. You should be, too. I sent you the email. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, I was so I was that was... Yeah, a little old show like us with yeah. barely any subscribers, barely any yeah. any viewers, but they took yeah. us off. They took a, um, they took one of our shows off, like completely off. And and here's the evidence for it. Uh, wow. So this is an email that I got from YouTube saying they removed episode eleven, and it was because I guess your son Jeff, your other your other son, <laughs> your, pride, your pride and joy. 
was yeah. talking okay. about the 2020 election. Okay, and we we kind of touched on it a little bit, but most of the show was about Kyle Rittenhouse and the protests yeah. and everything yeah. that was kind of surrounding all of that. And so it surprised me that that one little part that Jeff and I were talking about uh, the 2020 election yeah. made the whole entire show uh, disappear. Now, I would have liked them to have kind of told me about it and then say, hey, just just take this part out because it's no big deal for me to go into YouTube yeah. studio and sure. just remove that five minute clip. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, because you got to remember something, episode 11, after we all got off, after you guys got off the show, I stayed on and streamed until like midnight uh, because I was streaming. I don't know if you remember, you know, Portland Andy, and I was showing the protests or it was just a few people outside the Kenosha courthouse. Yeah. And, um, and so I stayed on streaming and I ended up like seeing or 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 there was some protesters there that had uh, lanyards around their neck with phone numbers. And one of the videos uh, zoomed in on the uh, phone number. There was phone numbers on these lanyards and mm -hmm. it was all about, uh, you know, racial justice and all this stuff. And so mm -hmm. I called the, the number. And at, at that point, this was, you know, around midnight and I was I had a few drinks. And so I was talking about threatening to like, I wanted to kill white people or I felt like I wanted to kill, like I was just, you know, kind of playing along and uh, none of that, none of that's the reason. Yeah. That's the, the whole reason why we got banned was because of a five minute clip. So I had to spend a few uh, weeks trying to filter this out. And so that's why I kind of waited until now uh, for us to okay. start our, our new yeah. show. But but we should be proud of this. We had a show removed on YouTube. I'm, yeah. I sent you the email. I want you to print it up and I want you to frame it. Like well, we, yes. we got censored on YouTube. I think it's great. And maybe it's because, you know, if you're looking at this from a Freudian perspective that, uh, you know, this is uh, almost subliminal, but maybe they, they know that, the 2020 election was a conspiracy and hey, uh, you, do. you don't want our first episode no we can talk no. about the 2016 election yeah. we can talk all day long about hillary clinton yeah uh, you know saying that it was russian collude russian yeah. interference all this stuff yeah we could go we could even go as far back as the 2000 election right with yeah, george bush, bush and yeah. gore Hanging and, chair. and he demanded the recount. Yeah, we could talk all day about all that. Those crazy old voters in Palm Beach County, the dangling chads. Yeah, the, the dimple like, chad, dangling chad, all that stuff. And and I don't know if you watched the um, the press conference on Wednesday with President Biden. Only part but of he it. even said that this next election, this midterm election, if because they didn't pass the voting rights bill will be an illegitimate election wow i know so we could talk all day about that Maybe we could uh and and hillary clinton but we can't talk about the 2020, 2020. election nope okay so can't. as long as you and i and and everybody all our guests talk about other things other than the 2020 election we're good this yeah. episode won't be removed but this episode isn't about this this episode is about somewhat of, of the corruption of the FBI. We can't get too deep into the FBI because it's, yeah. it's just so much. I mean, you're yeah. talking a, a five, like a whole year. We could talk about the FBI yeah, and, and yeah. how they instigate and, and, and uh, the deep, uh, the, the informants that they have. And yeah, January, they, January the 6th, Ray Epps. No, you can't talk about that either. Can't talk about him. Okay. Take that uh, but we could talk about previous FBI. We could talk about current FBI, like what they've done currently. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that's kind of where I think we should start. This episode is about the FBI and Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King's birthday was Monday. Well, it wasn't Monday. It's the 15th of January. But yeah. We celebrated on a Monday. Monday. So... Uh, and I know you've you you've been preparing for this show, and you got tons of stuff, and it's very exciting. So I want to get right into it, but uh, we just had to kind of get through this little, you know, stuff. So, so I, anyways, I would go ahead and just uh, you know, first of all, James Earl Ray. If if you're going to do any comparisons 
to the Kennedy assassination with Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, immediately, you know, being rounded up. Uh, now James Earl Ray took a little longer. I think he was on, I think he went to Canada and then came back, if I'm not mistaken. And he later. escaped from like, prison. Yeah, well, yeah. that was before. Yeah. Yeah, that was before. And he yeah, he's he definitely had a criminal record, there's no question. But I mean it was kind well, of why do you think the FBI would want to kill Martin Luther King? Well I mean let's uh, get right into it. If if, if they're involved has, J. Edgar Hoover uh hated him. I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh I think it's because J. Edgar Hoover saw, you know, the incriminating film evidence of Martin Luther King in compromising positions outside of his marriage. I'm going to try to be as gracious as I can to... Um, yeah, we're not here to bash Martin Luther King. No, we're, we're not, not at all. No. If anything, you know, and, and okay, uh, and, and to get past all that stuff about other women, you know, Coretta Scott King, his widow, uh, forgave him posthumously and said, you know, that was between us. And uh, if you ever watch the movie Selma, you know, when uh, you, you can see that at their home, the King home uh, or wherever they were staying at that time, you know, a phone call comes in and it's a tape recording of a woman with Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King says, you know, were they better than me? And he says, no, he does. He doesn't deny that stuff happened, but you know, you, you could see that there, I don't know if King had changed, but I mean, J. Edgar Hoover plumbed the depths of that. Uh, even Spike Lee in his uh, movie on Malcolm X, uh, puts in the part where Malcolm X is speaking to his wife, Betty Shabazz, and they're speaking in a hotel room and it's being tape recorded. And she's asking him, Martin Luther, or she's asking uh, Malcolm X, you know, are, do you have relations with other women like, you know, Elijah Wallace Muhammad, the head of our black Muslim church? Are, are you engaging? And he says, no, you are the apple of my eye. You know, you are a gift from God. He says all these wonderful things about his wife. And this is supposedly word for word from an FBI wiretap that I guess Spike Lee got a hold of when he was doing the uh, screenplay. And there's a break in that. And, and obviously it's a, it's a break of FBI agents a couple of rooms down or maybe the next room and they're wearing headphones. And the guy, after he hears, um, and I don't know, this is, it's not off topic because this just kind of shows you the context of what, the FBI are doing there. They're wiretapping Malcolm X and the FBI agent takes the headphones hearing Malcolm X extol the, the virtues and his love, you know, towards his wife. He removes the uh, headphones from his head because he's listening to the, you know, the tape recording and the wiretap. He says, wow, compared to Martin Luther King, this guy's a saint. And, and wow. that you know, Spike, Spike Lee, just by showing that one scene, just shows you how deep, the FBI was under the orders of J. Edgar Hoover, who didn't leave office until Nixon's uh, tenure in 1971, I believe. J. So Edgar Hoover, the crossdresser, right? Yes, yeah, well, yeah. He's he's buried in a dress under. Well, the that's bank. fine. I mean, is he's transgender? Yeah, sure. back well, I mean, but I think it's J. Edgar Hoover. And that's fine. We're not against transgender. So why was? But, but you're asking the question: Why was the FBI so much into this? I believe this was driven by J. Edgar Hoover, and he just, you know. I mean, you can look at the effect the FBI has on on stuff, you know, the whole Russian collusion hoax and James Comey and all that stuff. Now, well, look at today. Look at look at last weekend, right before the uh, Martin Luther King Day. There was a, a, a synagogue, right, right. that was a, a, right. attacked by, a, you know, Islamic or Palestine, you know, I forget what it was, but yeah. it was, he wanted that lady freed. And he attacked. He went and and took over a Jewish synagogue on the yep. Sabbath, which is a Saturday for right to Jewish religion, and held him hostage. And then the yep. FBI comes out after they kill the guy, and they say, "Oh well, it's not uh, it's not religious extremism." And yet, his last words before he got shot by a sharpshooter were effing Jews. How can they say it's not yeah. religion? Those were his last words. That was his whole motive. I know they it's it's just I mean that's the most recent yeah. one and then yeah. right before that we had the uh, Christmas massacre in Wakusha was Wakusha Wisconsin or mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. where that guy drove a, an SUV through a parade a Christmas parade and then the FBI comes out and says 
the SUV uh, got in an accident. This guy just, you know, whatever. And then they start attack. They 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 deflect, and they start going after the prosecute the D, the district attorney's office, saying that oh yeah. well he was just released early on bail and that shouldn't have happened. We'll slap him on the wrist and we'll give people serious penalty. I mean, it's just it, it's yeah. always it's always the same story. Uh, whatever their narrative is during that time, you bring up Jay Hoover, they had a certain narrative back then that they had to stick with. And then here we are, you know, in 2022, there's a certain narrative everybody's got to stick with as well. So that's my two cents. I'm not, I'm not as an expert as you are, but. Well, I I would say, you know, there, you've got some stuff there with the Washington post article and, you know, Washington post is not a, at this time, um, it certainly wasn't never a right wing publication, but this writer in the Washington Post for you know the research. Well, this was your uh, this is yeah. was you wanted. Uh, yeah. This guy does a great job. Uh, that is an incredible picture right there, and that you know picture. Yeah, so from, talk about that. That's well, this is Dexter King on the left. This is Martin Luther King's son, and he's going to the Bushy Mountain Prison in Tennessee to speak to, confront, and meet. Uh, the, the man who is, you know, accused in history books say killed Martin Luther King, shot him, you know, sniper shot Martin Luther King in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and this is Dexter King, the son of Martin Luther King. Now, you you imagine for a second if, you know, OK, that's an amazing photograph. Yeah. And, and you're my, you're my son. OK, so you right. go to the prison and shake hands with the guy that shot me. You know, twenty years before, or Who would that old, be? actually, and what would you do? That would you be able to muster? The owner of YouTube shot you. What's that again? The owner of YouTube shot you. Some Chinese guy. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. For, all right. For okay. all your dis for all your dis yeah. your disinformation campaign. And you fly and over there. You fly over to China. I fly over to China, and I meet Deng Zhao Ziaiping, yeah. not Omicron, which was supposed to be the was supposed to be the Z virus, but it's the Omicron. They skip Z not to offend. Oh them. well. Hey, the pandemic. Hey, hey, everybody! Congratulations! The pandemic is almost over. Yes. I don't know if anyone's been looking at the news. Sorry to change the subject. No, no, that's okay. I'm. Uh, the pandemic is over, folks. Go live your life. Lisa the told CDC me she was gonna... has changed all their stuff, the science, and all yeah. that. They changed everything miraculously. Yeah. It's over. Go yeah. live your life. And also, it's only a pandemic of the unvaccinated now. So go live your life. All right, go ahead. Back no, I was going to tell you. Lisa told me she was going to uh, take all of my leftover masks and make a speedo for me. But that's that's probably people are leaving now and they're throwing up. Back to this picture. How many masks is that? I don't know. Jeez, no, no, that's terrible. Masks? That's terrible. Well, now you know, the the back side of the ma- the speedo yeah. it's probably about five or six masks. Right? Oh gosh! All the right. Front side of the speedo, how many masks? Anyway, uh, so Dexter right. King is shaking. Uh, this is why people watch the show, Dad. James, okay, James Earl Ray's hand in prison, which tells you something about the King family. The King family, you know, you talk about uh, the New Testament view of turning the other cheek, you know, forgiveness, all the things that Martin Luther King stood for. And especially in this day and age, you know, with other organizations that are cropping up that claim social justice and everything. I mean, Martin Luther King's legacy, okay, for his flaws and everything else. I mean, this is his family. We all have them. We all have them. We have them. And and here's Dexter King. And he he asks, and just right as this picture was being taken, he asked him, did you kill my father? And James Earl Ray says, no, I did not. Right. And James Earl Ray, after he escaped from prison, now he escaped from prison after he killed Martin Luther King. Okay. Uh, I watched it on the history show with uh, mm-hmm. uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. And uh, or no, it was uh, what's his name? The other guy. Might have been Larry, Larry Fishburne, but go no, ahead. No, it wasn't. He. Uh, what's the guy? What's the guy's name that does? He's he was in Shawshank Redemption. He's got the the nice voice. Anyways. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. So he Morgan Freeman did an episode about James Earl Ray escaping from prison. This was after he killed Martin Luther King. Okay. And and then so what he wanted to do was was uh once he got recaptured, uh he wanted to like basically make a deal saying, Hey, I'm gonna rat. 
I'm going to rat on everything I know. I'm going to rat on the FBI. I'm going to rat on everybody else. Everybody I know. And then on his deathbed, he basically said he never killed Martin Luther King. Right. So, And Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King's widow, most if not all of the King children and nieces and nephews um, raised money for James Earl Ray's defense and for him to be able to, you know, have, because he recanted. In fact, James Earl Ray recanted right afterwards, right after he pled guilty to it. The only evidence there is of James Earl Ray um, is he, there is no evidence uh, putting him at the scene of the crime. Like with Lee Harvey Oswald, there is, you know, he was in the Texas School Book Depository, no question. That's John F. Kennedy assassination. Yeah, and, that's right. So he was, you know, he was there. But with James Earl Ray, there's no evidence that even has him there. How would James Earl Ray know where King is going to be? So what do you? So what happened during the assassination? Let's go over that. Let's go kind well, of. Well, it was it was a it was a sniper shot, no question. There's no evidence of. James Earl Ray's familiarity with Martin Luther King was at a hotel in Memphis. He was, he was at the he walked out on on yes. the balcony, and then across the, the street, it was a shot to the uh, under the jaw and through the head, and he was taken to the hospital. They worked for about an hour on him, and I I have one of the, one of the young ladies in my class uh, today. We were talking about that because she wanted to know about you know. I told her that this was coming on tonight. We're going to be talking about it. And she had a really interesting question. She said, you know, she had heard, and there's a lot of stuff that people hear, um, that the doctors didn't work feverishly in Memphis to save King's life. And that is not true. They did. But the shot was just such a, you know, just such a fatal shot, not unlike John F. Kennedy's head shot, um, that Martin Luther King never, ever, I don't think he even had any last words. Um, and he just, you know, clumped to the balcony floor there and basically probably was dead then but they did try to you know keep him i guess there was a pulse i don't know but the lorry um i don't know if it was a bar or, hot or it was it was part of a hotel it was the back of it and there was a clear angle to the to the balcony now you know there's there's no evidence that puts james Earl Ray at the scene of the crime he he was in memphis that day but he, you know where was he right was Lee Harvey Oswald on the sixth floor of the school book depository? Probably. Well, some people say, yeah, he probably sometime in his tenure there in his employment, but was he there when the shots were fired? Probably not because he would have taken him, you know, it took him basically uh, too long to get down the stairs to have been seen by the police officer, you know, in the second floor lunchroom to go down for, you know, for, floors of eight flights of stairs and passing women who didn't see him. And, you know, if you ever, and, and I, I hate to go back to JFK so much, but you know, well, the, the FBI was kind of involved. Well, well yeah, there's, yeah, you got James yeah. Hosty's uh, file. Uh, they had a file. FBI had a file. CIA had a file. Army had a file on Lee Harvey Oswald, the Marine Corps, of course, since he was a Marine. Um, there was a file on James Earl Ray. Now, how is it, I mean, I would like to know if there's a file on me or a file on oh, you. Oh, by the way, yes, uh, your one of your favorite JFK producers, uh, okay. Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone has a new documentary on Showtime. It's going to run until I think the end of February. It's a two-hour uh, episode, but he's going to release a four-hour episode after it runs on Showtime. It's a documentary. The JFK assassination, one of your favorite wow. movies, JFK, right? Wow. And it basically proves that it was a coup. Yeah. It was a coup. Well, we keep hearing that word, don't we? Yeah. No, oh, 2020 so. election. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. 20, we got you could talk about 2016, Hillary oh, Clinton. Oh, shoot. All it's right. all Russian. We yeah. could talk about Obama's, uh, or not Obama, but O'Biden's uh, yeah. Wednesday speech about yeah. The next election this year, illegitimate, illegitimate, but yeah, me too. but you can't talk about the 2020 election, Dad. You can't yeah, talk sorry. about it. You're not allowed on YouTube. Okay, well, back to, back, to, back Martin. to Martin Luther King. How yeah, is he assassinated? He was okay, shot through uh, the throat by a, this all guy. All there is are fingerprints on the rifle. Same thing as as JFK. Yeah, JFK, and but of course, there's also the testimony of the funeral director who was embalming Lee Harvey Oswald's body, who says that gentlemen identifying themselves as the FBI asked to have access to 
um, Lee Harvey Oswald just to get some you know, samples from his body. And when the funeral director went back in, first of all, he saw that they had the type of stuff that you would use to get fingerprints, like it's a roller back then at that day and other things to get fingerprints from, I guess, Lee Harvey Oswald. And when he went back in to, you know, fix the body of Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, preparing it for, you know, for burial, um, that he noticed that there was ink on Lee Har Harvey Oswald, you know, deceased uh, on his hands where they had taken prints. And then, hey, so in this picture, hold on, let's get yeah. back to Martin Luther King. Isn't that yeah. Jesse Jackson? Right that now? is Jesse Jackson. That's the day before. Yeah, he was he was uh, right affiliated there. with, uh, you know, the, that's the hotel. Yeah, at the well, yeah, they were all they probably had rooms there, and and that Jesse Jackson was part of the L SCLC Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Uh, Jesse Jackson claimed for years that he cradled Martin Luther King's body in his in his hands that Luther King was hit, and that. You know, he helped a dying Martin Luther King in his, or a dead, maybe, Martin Luther King Jr. in his hands. And that's not true. Uh, Jesse Jackson was not there at that time the shots were fired. I think Ralph Abernathy was, which, who was uh, Martin Luther King's right-hand man um, and who uh, drove the cart with King's casket in it, driven by, I don't think it was donkeys, you know, sort of a rural uh, theme to the funeral. Um and Ralph Abernathy was, was was there. I don't I don't know if anybody cradled him. I think they got him. They dragged him. I think to a stretcher. They got a stretcher. Got him right to the hospital. And and you know, unfortunately, he never never made it. Um, but you know, the, first of all, the 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 hand you have fingerprints on the rifle. Well, you know, when you, when you fire a rifle, um, all right. As you, I, and I haven't fired very many of them, but you you there's very few. I places. thought you were a minute man. Yeah, whatever. I'm I'm descended from them, as are you. No, you said uh, uh, you went to a thing where you were able to fire three shots under a minute. Oh, yeah. Rifle, remember, remember that, or was that some bullcrap story you told me and my cousin? Uh, probably was. Okay, thank you. All right, go I'm back to Martin Luther King. FBI surveillance. If little, if little Ricky's listening. Yeah, okay. My dad he is. told us that night when we okay, were three. No, I never. He I never fired started. three shots. Yes, you did. You said you went to a a a civil war thing. And okay, yeah. Had All right, yeah. rifles, and you were able to fire three shots. Well, you have to. You had to load. Yeah, we're way off, man. People are going to be dropping out of here like flies. But that's fine. Uh, that, it was that's that part was, of the show. That was a muzzle. That was a muzzle loader. There's no way. Well, yeah, you you have to fire three shots in a minute. And, All uh, right, back to Martin Luther. Okay, I got off three shots in a minute, but they weren't accurate. No, you didn't. Okay, I, you know, I don't know. Nobody. I mean, I don't. I, I wasn't timing myself. Somebody said I did, yeah. and I thought there's no way. There's it, no. I'm way. not that coordinated. You're correct. I didn't. Okay, back to Martin Luther King. Yes. All right, Lee Harvey. I know uh, the FBI. Uh, first of all, you know the evidence that links. Uh, I don't. I forget if it, this. Washington Post article, really good article, and people should just go ahead and Google um, Google James Earl Ray, and that's James, and then E A R L, and then Ray R A Y. Google James Earl Ray, and you'll get the Washington Post article. Read that article, and I've done a lot of research on this, and this article will fill in the blanks for you because I know time's an issue here. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, this writer of this article in a very you know, respected, not a right wing, you know, publication. The Washington Post does a really good job because I think they're trying to pay tribute to the King family and their resilience and their desire to get to the truth about the death of their patriarch um, and find out, you know, find out what happened. And uh, Coretta Scott King and other members of the King's family paid uh, for the legal spent expenses of James Earl Ray to defend himself and to you know clear his record and to try to get yeah. other inquiries and there were some when you read the article there were a couple of them that were done not not a really good job back to the fingerprints on the rifle you know when you fire a rifle that it's, doesn't look like a hard shot though i mean that, no they're, probably they're, not uh, especially with a scope because it had a scope right. but you know you, you you hold your hand your you know okay i'm right-handed so when i'm going to fire it the fingerprints are going to be on the wooden stock okay and uh which is covering the barrel 
I, and I, I, pr I probably don't have the parts labeled correctly and I'm probably going to have a thumbprint or something, you know, above the trigger. And that's, that's going to be about it for fingerprints. But uh, my understanding was James Earl Ray was, this, this gets into the same thing as Lee Harvey Oswald. James Earl Ray was left-handed and would have fired it this way. So whoever somehow got his fingerprints, they just like with Lee Harvey Oswald, they put the wrong prints on the, the gun the wrong way for it to have been fired by those gentlemen who were both left-handed. So there's all sorts of crap in this. And again, there's nobody that puts James Earl Ray at the scene of the crime. Uh, another accusation was people saw uh, a duffel bag uh, at the front of the apartment complex near where you would go in to go to the spot where the alleged, you know, wherever the assassin was with firing the, the shot. Uh, and, and even even the Washington Post says it was probably an, it was an FBI sharpshooter. The Washington Post says that. I didn't say that. The Washington Post said it when they wrote the article. And so um, the, the duffel bag contained some really weird stuff. But later, uh, when, you know, the official FBI forensic examination of the apartment and everything in it was, the contents of that duffel bag were, pla were already placed in areas. So when the inventory was done of the apartment, then that stuff was listed as having appeared there. But there are eyewitnesses seeing a duffel bag placed there. One one eyewitness says he saw the duffel bag dropped out of a, a white pickup truck. Didn't describe what type it was or what year. And onto the front part of that uh, apartment uh, step, whatever townhouse step, wherever that was. And that's the part I don't know enough about. I've never been, I've been through Memphis. I didn't, I didn't walk around it, um, you know, to see everything. And there is a, uh, a museum uh, there at the hotel, the Lorraine Hotel. Uh, is now a, a site, a histor historical site. You can go, I don't know if you can get up on the balcony itself, but you can be pretty close to it and see where, where King, you know, spent his last moments on this earth. But his, now, his, family's, his family's resilience is amazing, and they just don't believe the FBI report. They don't trust it. They've well, been he, about that. He, let me share with you, oh. you already know about this. Uh, the... FBI sent Martin Luther King a, a letter to convince him to kill himself. Yes. yes. Before Absolutely. the assassination. Right. And this is now. That? How would that letter get sent? If you know what Read the letter. The, so, all you guys, anybody yeah. who's watching this, go on Vo Vox, yeah. V O X. Yeah. Or Google uh, suicide letter. FBI yep. Martin Luther King. So this this title is read the letter they sent sent yeah Martin Luther the King, Martin Luther King to try to convince him to kill himself prior yeah. to the assassination. Here's the letter. Wow. I can try and zoom in on it. Uh, so imagine you know Coretta Scott King and if the kids ever you know get wind of so this. that I mean why why yeah. wouldn't the kids and everybody yeah. Like if Xi Jinping told you, yeah. hey, Mr. Joint, I didn't like your 2020 election video. Yeah. Uh, kill yourself. Yeah. And then a week later, you're dead. Yeah. A gunshot wound by somebody. Yeah, sure. Other than yourself, I would be like, huh. Maybe yeah. the CCP is involved. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no. And I mean, who would authorize a letter to be written like that? Um, you know, J. Edgar Hoover, who just somehow had a penchant for being preoccupied with. Should we read this letter? It's pretty messed up. Yeah, well, I mean, that's up to you or just refer. You've referenced it. That's good enough. Let people read it. Let them go on and do the research themselves, which they should do. And definitely just Google and read the Washington Post article. They do a really good job. A couple hey, things well, hold on. The, the ending. Hold on. I'm sorry. King. No, go ahead. There is only one thing left for you to do. Okay. You don't. You know what it is. You have just thirty-four days in which to do this. Exact number has been selected for a specific reason. Okay. It has definite practical significance. You are done. 
There is but one way out for you. You better take it before your filthy, abnormal, fraudulent self is barred to the nation. Okay. Dude, that's that, messed up. And see, that's that was while uh, pictures, compromising pictures of him, which did exist. Well, there's that movie, The Table. I've yeah. never seen that. I've never seen that. All right. Well, there's this movie called The Table. And All right. It's basically a... A table. I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to get. It. It's it's about a table that they would have in the hotel rooms, and they would put the women on it. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you better. Called the table. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you we'll go. Ta we'll table that conversation. Yeah, we'll table that one for another time. Um, one of my students uh, today was. She has a podcast too, and it's on misogyny. And it's kind of I want. Well, I hey, we can promote it. Yeah, right well, here. you know, I I can't. I don't want to use her name without her permission or the name of her. Uh, well, but talk to her, see if she wants. Next to time, yeah, it. I'll talk to yeah, her. Yeah, we'll put it on the uh, intro. Delightful young lady, very bright and very concerned, and and was very interested. You know that we're doing this, and especially with you know you and Jeffrey and Ricky at times, and thought that was wonderful, a family affair, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, back to this letter, back to the FBI. Yeah, they were they were giving Coretta Scott King all sorts of stuff. Now you can imagine she's the mother of all these kids, Coretta Scott King. And you know, I mean, they've already had gunfire uh, fired at their house back uh, when they were in Atlanta, Georgia, and he was the pastor of the. Uh, I'm going to get this Tenth Avenue. I forget what it was Tenth Avenue Baptist Church, I believe, and they'd already had you know they'd already had gunfire. And I, I believe Selma, there were shots fired, you know, wherever all the workers be, before they went on the Pettus Bridge for the protest. So, you know, there's some good movies to watch. You know, um, Malcolm X is a good movie. Uh, Selma is a great movie. Watch it. Um, read the Washington Post article. Uh, do research on your own. Just, you know, find out James Earl Ray. How did he get to all these places with no money and and his criminal record, see, you, you get these sketchy characters, these fall guys, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald, really sketchy, with an intelligence past, a deep intel past. Now, that has not oh, been... CIA. Yeah, that yeah. has not been un uncovered with James Earl Ray. You know, they just, they write him off as a, a you know, felon with a, what was it, um, you know, criminal record, just essentially, we'll just say had a criminal record. Lee Harvey Oswald did not, but... Um, well, I think anyway. even this, uh, a letter from the FBI. Yeah. This is a proven document telling Martin Luther King to kill himself yeah. prior to his execution. Mm -hmm. And then his family believes James O'Reilly was framed. Yes. Okay. And yeah, and, uh, the, and it, all of them son, to this day, all of them to this day still hold to that very. And yeah. I don't know if there's been anything. And then here's his son shaking yeah. the hand, believing yes. that all this is true. And that just shows you, you know, if I can say this without getting, you know, the evangelical Christian zeal of the King family and their commitment to forgiveness and love and turning the other cheek. And even uh, even though, you know, King had uh, ties, you know, to Mahatma Gandhi, uh, you know, peaceful resistance uh, and you know that Gandhi, that Gandhi uh, certainly, you know, was emblematic in displaying, and and King tied into that. Um, I also believe that um, James Earl Ray's preoccupation with you know anti-communism, uh, which you know may not have been that misguided, but uh, there were accusations of uh, Martin Luther King having uh, ties to communist front organizations, and I addressed this to a professor at Broward. College Central Campus. You went to school with his children, Dr. Paul Maddox. Rest, may he rest in peace. And Dr. Maddox, I asked him because he was, yeah, he great, great man, great family. You know, oh you, yeah, I love the Maddox. Yeah, family. and you you know his kids well. You yep. went to school with them, and I, you know, Dr. Maddox was helping me get a really good grasp on Black history. You know, to use in the school you guys went to, and to you know present it in such a way as to make it effective in the classroom and not just do it just to fill in a, a blank. But I asked Dr. Maddox that question. I said, you know, what about uh, Martin Luther King's, you know, affiliation with communist front organizations? Because when Martin Luther King day was being commemorated 
uh, Ronald Reagan would not stay in the Rose Garden because he had discovered some of King's ties with communist front organizations. Ronald Reagan left and did not stay for the, you know, the commemorating of the Martin Luther King Day celebration. So um, I asked Dr. Maddox, you know, why do you suppose King did this? He said no one would listen. He said he was desperate for help to try to, you know, get the civil rights movement moving. And that, I believe, not only the dalliances that King, you know, definitely was guilty of, there's no question, even Coretta Scott King, you know, she will not deny it. I'm sure it grieves her. Well, she's gone now, but when she was alive, I'm sure, you know, obviously for any uh, woman, it would bother them, wife of a famous person. Uh, But also, you know, so you got two things going on with J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI, you know, uh, sexual dalliances and communist front affiliations. You know, and if you look at Chad Hoover's, you know, sub Well, they try to change the public opinion of yeah, the person sure. so that it makes sure. it okay when they die. Yeah, yeah. So that's, there's a lot more stuff that needs to be either, you know, I wish, you know, if Trump were still president, maybe he would release some of that stuff. It's kind of like when someone storms in a synagogue yeah, uh, who wants to free a Palestinian, uh, you know, Man. prisoner and takes everybody hostage. And then they say, well, it's just, uh, you know, he's just a deranged individual. And there are a lot of great. There's no religious. Uh, yeah. You know, it's the same FBI. It's, yeah. it's just a different. They have a different playbook. And on the lower level, on the lower level, there are some wonderful FBI agents that I have taught. Uh, I've taught their kids. Um, I sing in a church choir with an FBI agent, and she has a lot of strong feelings about stuff that still exists there. And you know, but but they're out there working every it's day. The deep and, state FBI. Well, okay, but but case in point, you know, they they were very effective. They they handled the synagogue situation at least tactically and strategically handled it. And then the puppet. The puppet goes out there and says, oh, it's this. Okay. But yeah. And yeah, that was stupid. And see, that's a higher level person, but you're right. right. That's what I mean. The higher level guy. Yeah. The, the puppet. But, yeah. The puppet, but your, but your rank and file agents. Who oh, were, the boots on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Boots on the ground. Those guys and those men and women of law enforcement, God bless them. So I have a hard time with this stuff because there's part of me that, you know, I honor our, you know, Law enforcement, first responders, which you know the agents are, come come heck or high water, and but yet at the same time as you're saying, now we got the higher ups like James Comey. Well, that's why I put yeah. that quote from Lyndon Spooner in the beginning. Okay, that's right. It, it's it's a the government is run by a few, and, and they think, and and they assume that they're elected by everybody. Yeah. But they're not. They don't have the consent. They're just the bureaucratic government, the people that aren't elected. So the clarion call to all of our listeners is to do the research, read this Washington Post referenced article, well done, read your other stuff, watch Selma, even, you know, nothing wrong with Malcolm X watching that uh, interesting guy. Boy, that was, he was killed by a conspiracy within his own religious organizations, uh, hitman ordered by yeah, he was like gunned down yeah you know 1965 and then like a tent like a revival tent and you know i was i was middle school high school when all this stuff was going on all these assassinations in 1968 especially a very seminal year for assassinations martin luther king bobby kennedy george wallace you know you get rid of the yeah you were at a impressionable age too yes you were well, 1968 yeah i was i was 20 turning 20 that year so this stuff really hit me. Vietnam War is raging. Um, and so you've got all this stuff going on, all these guys getting killed. And, and and so you set up the 1968 election for, you know, you get rid of this. Basically, you, you intimidate the civil rights movement, okay, to shut up because King shot. And now you get rid of the potential rivals for Hubert Humphrey. You get rid of Bobby Kennedy. Get rid of uh, George Wallace. You don't kill him, but you put him in a wheelchair um, in Bladensburg, Maryland. And and then now you got the showdown between Herbert Hoover. I'm sorry, Herbert Hoover. Her, Hubert Humphrey 
and Richard M. Nixon, Republican, 1968. Uh, Nixon, the same guy that uh, didn't know where he was on the day John F. Kennedy was shot, but was working for the Coca-Cola company as a high-powered lawyer right. and staying yeah. at the Plaza a glo- a glo- in Healy Plaza. And there it is, conspiracy. Yeah, but, not but, a conspiracy theory, an actual conspiracy. Yes, yes. So, I mean, it's just like, did, it, did this come back, this full circle? I mean, was this all set up? To just you know intimidate civil rights movement, all these things I just said, and now you got. But fortunately, we have some great. Well, you have yeah. to squash the civil rights movement because you want to keep the race war going because society is just full of haves and have-nots. Yes, right. You don't want a class warfare. Class warfare always overthrows the top. Yeah. As long as you can keep everybody divided, as long as you can keep everybody fighting over bread and money and all this, mm-hmm. they're never going to pay attention to what the real issues are. And the real issues has always been you got to, we're all humans. And I think yeah. Martin Luther King actually, he was basically saying, like, we're all specs on this yeah. planet. We're all just specs. And the elites and, and everybody, nobody's greater than the other. Mm-hmm. Right. We all do deserve a space on this planet. And, you know, if you kind of break down what he was you know, really trying to say in his religion, you know, and, and so. It doesn't matter what race you are, you know, he wasn't anti-white. Yes. You know, uh, he was just trying to get, you know, the people of his of his mm-hmm. race, you, you know, hey, like we're all equal. And I believe yeah. in that. And the elites don't want that. And so, uh, and the governments don't want that. They want to keep everybody. It's divide and conquer always. And, as and you that's out, not a conspiracy theory. Yeah. That's truth. Yes. Uh, as a shout you out know, to your younger brother uh, during the George who got, his, who got who got episode eleven kicked off of YouTube. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you, Chattanooga, Jeffrey. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah, thank uh, he you. He was Jeffrey. called upon by his church, First Presbyterian Church of Chattanooga, to make a comment on all the racial stripe during the, during the George Floyd and all the other things back in, you know, June of 2020, late May and June of 2020. And he quoted almost exclusively from Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, it was, it was, Which received, he should have. it was received by not only the members of his own congregation, but other congregation in Chattanooga is a really a wonderful kind of a, you know, Jeffrey did just a great job. I was very proud of him. They, there is a recording of it somewhere, um, and I watched it a couple times. Well, I'd play it, but we'd probably get removed again. Yeah, you probably would. No, but it's, you know, it's basically all the quotes from Martin Luther King. He's a great writer, no question. Letter from yeah, Mary Hannah yeah. Joe, um, you know, no question. And with a great loss for this country and for his family. But this family, you know, there, there's a lot of criticism because it's a corporation, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you're going to keep the legacy alive, I can't think of better people to have to do that than his own family and his, his children and his grandchildren. He's got a, a granddaughter. I don't know her name. I was going to look it up before this, but she's like, she's got to be a genius. The woman is incredibly articulate in her research and and, and not just her own fa- her grandfather, but other areas of, of politics. Uh, really something. I'm really, I enjoy, I enjoy hearing her. Sometimes she's on She's been on CNN once or twice, Fox News once or twice. I don't know if she was on this season of the birthday celebration, but uh, here we are again at the end, and we yeah. uh, don't know where to go. I don't know where to go with this, but just recommend all you guys, please read the go Google James Earl Ray Washington Post article. It's a long article. Do your own research and have a cold beverage and get a shirt. There you go. Get a shirt, have a cold beverage, <laughs> and don't buy any stocks or Bitcoin right now. Good Lord. You're going to yeah. lose all your money. Yeah, I heard, I've heard that too. I lost so much money this week. Uh-oh. $200 billion. Wow. Gone. Gone. Wow. Gone in crypto. So crypto's disappeared? Yeah, it's getting there. I was going to turn – I bought some land. Uh, I was going to turn it into a crypto mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, federal, uh, the Fed Reserve announced today that they're coming out with a digital dollar. So get ready for that, folks. Yeah, I saw that. It's coming. 
Yeah, it's coming. And, wow. and speaking of conspiracies, let's go ahead and get in. Uh, now that we've kind of gone past yeah. the yeah, let's do that. Or, or JFK and yeah. Martin Luther King. So the money, the money is getting funny. Uh, it's going to digital currencies. Isn't that kind of interesting? Uh, the feds are raising rates this year. So everybody's pulling out of the market. It was a bad week. I mean, I lost a lot of money. It's horrible. Uh, so I don't know what to tell people. Like, I don't know what to tell them. Like, what do you yeah. do? I mean, I already bought land. I bought some weapons. I bought some guns. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, ammunition. I bought storable food. Uh, just to kind of stave off inflation, I, I took out a, a low interest loan to buy assets. And, but uh, I don't know what else to tell people. I don't know what to tell people to do. I don't know what to tell you to do. Uh, no. It's crazy, man. It's getting bad. And then, you know, you got this whole, I mean, I don't want to, let's not go too far down the rabbit hole because this is the end of the show. Okay. But uh, maybe next week we could talk about the metaverse. Okay, metaverse, yeah. That's very interesting stuff. Zuckerberg. Yeah, and Elon Musk is uh, microchip and brain chip wow. and stuff. They're going into human trials soon. Wow. Like, it's getting interesting, Dad. Can they put it in the vaccine and give it to us? No, I'm sorry. I don't think so. Okay. I think the vaccine is, Well, I'll tell you this. They're coming out with a new vaccine that actually has the dead virus in it which is what you want that's the flu shot yeah the flu shot always has a little bit of the dead uh, yeah. flu in it and you want the dead you want because what does it do it builds natural immunity and you know you, yeah. remember remember months ago conspiracy theorists the conspiracy theorists were yeah. talking about natural immunity and oh you're a conspiracy theorists and oh you're talking about uh you know <laughs> like it, it it kills me i hate it i hate it i hate the fact that we have to resort back to this uh you know new language of uh you know at this time of the year it's it's bad news or it's not real but then all of a sudden the people in charge say oh it's okay to talk about it yeah britain march the first they're going to lift yeah. all COVID restrictions in Britain. It's I say cool. February. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do have it a now. nice. Let's yeah. have a nice uh, a Valentine's Day. Everybody yeah. go out and kiss everybody. Might maybe Biden's spread, ratings will spread. Spread, Mister Joint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people left watching it. No, I'm just kidding. That's okay. Okay. Wrap everybody it up. watches over the weekend. All right. Is that it? That's it. Are we I'm done? Out of stuff. All right, next week we'll be here. Yes? No? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, everybody. Next week, say good night, everybody, to good Mr. Night. Joint. Good night, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Hope you enjoyed it. God okay, bless. we're going to play some music. All right. I'm going to shut us off. All right. Season two, episode Season one. Two. Stay away from misogynists. Go. Yes. All right. Stay away from James O'Reilly. <laughs>